Introduction to Mr. John Selling, a reasonably average man who goes through life with both eyes open and both hands firmly on the wheel. Mr. John Selling, practical and steady, who is about to be blindsided by the Twilight Zone. it look like but but there's a camera back there where i don't see a camera well, of course not that's because you just covered it up did i well that's one job done then good day hey hey come back here where, where the hell do you think you're going back to work and may i suggest you do the same thing it's nearly nine o'clock and you know how mr weatherall gets never mind never said a thing good day hey, wait a minute how do you know my boss's name? I don't. But you just said it. No, I didn't. You must have mistaken me for someone else. Good day. Listen, are you going to stand there all day? Yes. I want to know what you were doing up there. Up where? Upstairs. The mirror, the camera, remember? Ah, yes, that. Nothing whatsoever. Just a little routine maintenance. It's a camera. You've been spying on me. I have not. Look, it's all just part of the job. Now, be a good fellow and let me get back to it. No. I'm going to call the police. You wouldn't want to do that. No, I don't think so. Why not? False complaint. Show me where it says fixing the camera's against the law. That's not the point. I didn't put that camera there in the first place. It's not my camera. I don't even know how it got there. Ah, then you want installation. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not my department. Have a nice day. Oh. You know, you're not as pleasant in person as you are on TV. That's it. I am calling the police. Uh, there's really no need to do that. Look, John. May I call you John? We don't want to make too big a scene over this. I mean, it makes everything too complicated. I tell you, but... Look, all right, I'll tell you, but... We've got to stand right in there. In the closet? Shh. Why there? It's outside camera range. But it's in the bathroom. No, no. The other cameras. All right, talk. I want you to know I'm risking my job just telling you this. You're not supposed to know, you see? I mean, it takes all the fun out of it, doesn't it? All the fun out of what? Look at my chest. Excuse me? Here. You see those letters? J-S-T-V in big, friendly letters? Yeah, so what about it? Stands for John Selling Television. You're... Well, 
you're on television. I am? Yes, 24 hours a day. <laughs> you've got quite a following. <laughs> Did you know you've got people who tune in in the middle of the night just to watch you sleep? <laughs> Extraordinary. Who's watching? Oh, everybody. Well, everyone who subscribes, at least. Everyone, my, my neighbors, all the people I know. They were quite helpful, yes. Helped to set up cameras all over the place for maximum coverage. <laughs> your job, your car, the office, living room, den, bathroom. Well, that one was less than perfect, wasn't it? Bedroom, kitchen, rec room. Bed well, it is a cable service. Adults only, that sort of thing. Well, now you know. So, if you'll excuse me. I don't believe you. How could something like this happen without someone telling you? Shh. That's the whole point. If you knew you were on TV, you'd act differently. It'd take all the fun out of it, like I said. That's why everyone on the service signs a contract specifying they won't spill the beans. Besides, it gives all the folks you know a chance to be on TV. Archie, call nine. Have to go. Now be a good fella and don't tell anyone I told you. All right? Did you see that man? What man? He came right into the bathroom. I spent 10 minutes with him in the closet. Did you sleep all right last night? I slept fine. It's this morning I'm having a slight problem with. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I gotta go. Have a nice day, honey. Don't blow it for us. The ratings are terrific. Let's see. Gee, I think I left my car keys around here somewhere. I think I'll look for them. Try and stop me. Hello. Yes? You're to come with us. No, hey, let me go. Where, where are you taking me? My, my coat. Come, come on, guys. I don't know who you are, but you can't do this to me. You should have told us sooner. Well, you've gone and done it now, haven't you? Done what? Where are we going? There's some very big trouble, I'd say. Very serious trouble indeed. Smile at the birdie, Mr. Selig.
Who are they? Fans. Who's yours? Now that the secret's out, they can all come out of the woodwork. All those hormones repressed for five years. Disgusting, isn't it? I can rip the clothes right off you in a second, just like that. Do you really think so? Typical, isn't it? All these channels, nothing interesting on. Yes, I'll bring it. If you please, Mr. Seller, come on this way. Mr. Selling, Arthur Spence, nice to meet you. Please, take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Would you care for a cigar? Uh, something to drink. No, thank you. Comfortable? Yes, thanks. Good. Good. <laughs> now then, Mr. Selling, what the hell are you trying to do to us? What am I? What are you doing to me? To you? My dear Mr. Selig, look around you. This is a multi-million dollar business. When we first went on, when you first went on the air five years ago, we couldn't get $100 for a 30-second commercial. Now we're right up there, $100,000 for a 30-second spot. All of this was accomplished through long, hard hours of careful work. Now, now when we're just about to break even, now when we're just beginning to clear our deficits, you want to pull this? So you're the one who decided to do all this? Me? Oh, it wasn't me. Then who? Who? Who decided you should pay taxes? Who decided you should get up at 8 to go to work instead of 10? Who decides what money you use, what fashions you wear? I don't know. Same guy. But you can't just put my life on television. I have rights. Oh, yeah? This is the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. Go ahead. You show me where it says in there that I can't put you on TV. That's a technicality. Ah, oh, Mr. Selly. Let's cut right through to the heart of the matter, shall we? During the past five years, you have become an institution on American television. People like you. I like you. Hell, I watch you play bridge every Friday night with the Clearsons. He cheats, by the way. We have a better view of his hand than you do. I always thought as much. You... No, no, wait a minute. I don't understand. Why me? What's so interesting about me? You know Marilyn Carstairs? The woman on all the TV game shows. <laughs> OK, you tell me. What was the last thing she actually did that made her famous? Can't come up with a thing, can you? <laughs> don't feel badly. Neither can anybody else. But she's on TV. You see, some people are famous just for being famous. You put their face on TV often enough, and before you know it, they become a celebrity. <laughs> we took the same bet on you, and it paid off. Ah, there were down times. But you have to expect that. Like when you lost your job two years ago. You know, at first the ratings went up. Everybody wanted to know what was going to happen. But when you stayed unemployed, the ratings went down. So we stepped in and arrange that job for you at Teldar. You did that? Of course. Mr. Selleck, 
You don't actually think that things happen by accident in this world. <laughs> Haven't you ever noticed how sometimes things just seem to go your way? Something will happen and you'll, you'll find yourself saying, gosh, that was lucky, or gee, wasn't that a coincidence? That would be us, Mr. Sully. We have a whole department that looks after happy coincidences. How do you think you met Leslie? My wife? Hired by us. So I suppose we'll have to find her a new spot now. If you persist in making a federal case out of this. There you have it, Mr. Selig. Thousands of jobs. People's livelihood, millions of dollars in income. It's all riding on you. Can't you just forget it? Go back to living your life just the way you did before. No. No, I can't. I want my privacy back. You have no right. As you wish. I'll have a car brought around to take you home. sacked because of all this, two weeks notice and out. Just as cold as you please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause you any trouble. I wish there was something I could do. You just did. Come on. Just going over the fan mail. I had no idea so much had been collected. The gifts, offers of marriage, it's amazing. I just came to drop this by. It's a check. Back pay for the last five years. Oh, yes, they always intended to pay you. They just kept it in a trust fund until you either found out or the show got cancelled. But it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yes, I suppose it is. What are you doing? Company equipment. Not needed around here much more, is it? Now the show's been cancelled. Now that you know, it's not much fun anymore, is it? Then it's really over? Sorry, not my department. But the money, the women. You wanted your life back, just the way it was, right? Well, that's what you've got. And I hope you're satisfied. Sorry about your job. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. I think so. I guess that makes two of us. It's funny. I, I was just getting used to it. Yeah, well, not much can be done about it now, I suppose. No, I, I suppose not. Uh... Yeah. If you were the guy in charge and I were you, what would you do? 
Maybe you'd just tell me I was off the air, so I'd think I was. But I'm really on television without knowing it. This way, I go back to acting normal, which is what everyone wants in the first place. Well then, John. Good luck. Break a leg, as they say. My, but isn't it a wonderful day? The next time you think people are talking about you behind your back, or a happy coincidence seems just a little too good to be true, check behind the bathroom mirror or see if there are any channels missing from your TV. It just might be that John Selig's ratings have dropped and you've become a star in the phosphor dot world of the Twilight Zone.